What are your family ties with uh, Lev Tolstoy? Well, Lev Tolstoy is my great grandfather, and um, my family came to Sweden in 1917 and moved here permanently. But they they were here before because my grandfather Lev Nikolaevich, uh, Lev Nikolaevich, was Nikolaevich Lev Nikolaevich's son. He um, he had some illnesses that really weren't be able to be cured by any doctors in in Russia. So he came to new, hear about this doctor in Sweden who was called Dr. Vestilund. And so he eventually came here, tried his doctor and and uh, he made him much better. And so he came and saw him more and more often and eventually he married his doctor's daughter. And so uh, so they, they, they bought a place in Sweden. They came here every summer. And when the revolution started in 1917, it was uh, somehow the obvious choice to come here because we already had a place and it was the easiest place to uh, to flee to or to get to. And then they, of course, they never thought that it was going to last for such a long time. They they thought, you know, of course, there was a lot of troubles, a lot of things happening. And and my my uh, my grandmother thought uh, there was no point to go to the bank because there were all these queues and they said, let's just go, just leave and we'll come back next uh, next month. And, and of course, there was never any next month. And so, since then, the the family has been uh, has been in Sweden. Um, where were you born, and how old were you when you found out that your great grandfather was a great Russian writer? Well, I was I was born I was born in Sweden in seventy two, and then my parents moved from Sweden to to Switzerland because uh, my father was working for the United Nations there. Uh, in fact, as a Russian expert, and. Um, the first time I heard about my, I mean, my great grandfather was probably the first time I could sort of speak, basically. I mean, it was all around the family the whole time, the reporters everywhere, everybody was talking about Tolstoy, blah, 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 blah. And so, uh, there was, and was, uh, just having the surname makes it quite complicated because even when you go to kindergarten, your, your teacher will ask you, I mean, why do you, are you called Tolstoy? And I, you sort of, you have to learn quite quickly, why are you actually called Tolstoy? And what's so big about it? And so, um... Yeah, so you be, I think actually in the in the beginning when I was quite when I was quite little, I thought I thought it was a bit problematic because there was always this question. I, I remember we we lived in Switzerland, so I went skiing a lot and and I was sort of renting skis in a shop, and people were like, "Tulsa, are you related to the writer?" I'm like, "Oh my God, yes, yes, I am." And so, but now growing old and 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 getting used to this whole thing, you it's not so much of an issue. It's, it's a natural part of life, and and in fact, I think there's a lot of uh, I mean, of course, annoying and, and perhaps bad things, but also a lot of, of good things. And, and it, I think in a lot of ways it has enriched my life and it's a big family as well. So, so in that sense, uh, I'd say it's, uh, it's been a, an interesting and, and, uh, and probably a good part of my life. Do you remember who told you about your family to ties with Tolstoy? And um, what was your reaction when you first realized what it really means? Well, my father definitely was, I mean, my father was, my, was much, much older. I, I, he was quite old when I, when I was born. He was 17. My father was born in 1902. So he lived in Imperial Russia and he was 15 when they had to flee. So. He had he had uh, he had great memories of his great grandfather of, of I mean of his grandfather Lev uh, Nikolaevich and and uh, they spent all their summer holidays at Yasipaliana together with his father and uh, and he used to sit on on his uh, on his grandfather's uh, lap and he was telling him stories about uh, about this great uh, green stick that he, that Leo Tosi was looking throughout his whole life you know in Yasipaliana in the gardens to to find the meaning of life and all that and and so it was always I think it was always a it was a big part of the family and a big part of my father's life because, of course, he was cherishing all these memories that, you know, he had to... It was a big tragedy for him to, to leave Russia and everything behind. And uh, so it was, I mean, it was, it was everywhere in the family. And, and uh, the only unfortunate thing is perhaps that we, as opposed to a lot of, of other Russians, left to, to Sweden. And they were, we were basically the only ones who left here. The other ones, most went to perhaps Paris or... Or London and or New York, and so they had big sort of communities forming, and, and they, they spoke Russian and and um, and had uh, another another sort of uh, live culture than, than than we were able to to keep here, 
And so Russian, I mean, even though I speak a bit of Russian, the Russian language wasn't sort of kept in the same way as it would have been in, in, a, in a more natural environment. Whereas now, of course, I'm trying to learn again. But. Yeah. How did you make acquainted with the work of Lev Tolstoy? By sort of looking at my family's library, <laughs> I think, and and uh, and then uh, and then I think the first the first uh, actually the first book I, I read by by Tolstoy was was War and Peace, and I remember I was 11 at the time I was starting to read it, and I thought. I didn't, I didn't think I completely understood it. I, I particularly liked all the the pieces about war, which I thought was very exciting. And uh, and and then and then I reread it when I was when I went, started going to university again when I was 17 or 18. And then I, re I remember actually I was feeling a bit embarrassed because sort of being called Tosa, being great grandson of of Louis, inviting Tosa was like a bit sort of a bit strange. But uh, but then then I and then I've, I think I've. War and Peace. I've probably reread maybe four or five times, and I think there is there is always a new, a new story and uh, a new chapters, a new person that you find interesting. And and uh, so I think it's. I mean, that's one of Tolstoy's greatest is that he's, that uh, that it's such a it's an incredibly rich world, and and uh, and uh, it it makes you look at. I mean, I think it, he makes you look at the world through his own through sort of like goggles, so you see the the world more clearly somehow than you would do yourself. What are you doing now and where do you work? Well, at the moment I'm involved in several different projects. I mean, one of the, um, one of the things I'm, uh, I've, I've been trying to work on for the last few years is, uh, is an organic farm just uh, not very far from Yasepoliana, uh, our old uh, family estate in, in Russia, and, and uh, to the, um, say, maybe 50 kilometers from, from Tula. And uh, so we bought 7,000 hectares of land there, and we're trying to transform it to an organic farm, and and uh, and then eventually make our own products and and on our own brand, and and uh, I mean everything from from cheese to uh, to to perhaps uh, quality uh, meats and and uh, and eventually even I think with looking at doing beers. So we'll see. And then the other project I'm doing is. Uh, because it's going to be um, Sofia Andreevna's uh, in, in 2019 is also her, her her anniversary. So, so I'm working with this um, uh, Russian chef who who's a chef of a, of a restaurant called the White Rabbit in Moscow, and he's uh, he's number 15 on the San Pellegrino list of all the world's best uh, restaurants. And so we're working together to uh, to recreate all uh, Sofia Andreevna's Leotoso, his wife's. Uh, Handwritten recipes, and and uh, perhaps slightly modernizing them and, and putting them in uh, in a modern context, and then uh, and then just uh, uh, a few months ago, I, I published this uh, this book here, which is uh, Tolstoy's uh, Fables, in in um, cooperation with, I think probably Sweden's most uh, popular contemporary artist at the moment. And and uh, so we've been working on the project for two years, and now it's uh, it's being published in Sweden, of course, and it's coming out in France, England, China, and and uh, and soon in in, uh, in the original language, but with with these illustrations. As far as I know, you often visit Russia. If it's not a secret, why do you do it? Well, that's the, the not the secret. That's the thing. I mean, that's. Uh, one is, is of course trying to, to get this uh, farming project working, which is uh, I mean it's it's a, it's a big project and, and uh, a lot of lot of different elements, um, but if everything works well, it's it's uh, it's a life project. It's something that you you want to keep for 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 your family and for your children and so forth. And and I think with with all the with all the environmental problems that we have, and and also I think for to reinvigorate Russian farming traditions and 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 use there's so many resources. I mean, such enormous amounts of incredible land and resources in Russia, which are not being used. And and so I think that's uh, that's something that uh, that's happening. There's a lot of things in in that sector ha happening, and and I hope that they'll be they'll be part of it as well. 
In your opinion, what do you have in common with Tolstoy? Do you reread his books? And maybe there is a favorite one, or on the contrary, is is there one that you do not like at all? No, I, I, well, of course, I have reread several of his books. Uh, the latest one I, I reread was *The Death of Ivan Illich*. Um, I think my favorite would probably be. Uh, Probably War and Peace, but uh, but I like a lot of his short stories. I mean, uh, Haji Murat and and so forth. And and uh, I can't really say uh, I can't really say that there is clearly anything that I don't like. But but there was one there was one problem between my my grandfather uh, Lev Livovich and and Nikolaevich, and that uh, when when um, when he had written the Kreutzer Sonata. Uh, which was quite sort of critical to the regime and so forth. Uh, my grandfather was not at all, and, and he wrote something that was called the Chopin's Preludium, which is basically argued completely against his father's visions. And uh, from being from being considered uh, the most uh, his well, probably his his favorite son, and definitely his most intelligent son, and the one who was, would be most capable of of, uh, of taking over his intellectual inheritance. Uh, they uh, they ended up uh, more or less not talking again, and so that that created a lot of problems with my, for my grandfather, of course, and and it was a bit of a sad situation in the family, and and uh, and that on top of after uh, the 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 revolution also happening and 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 the whole family having to leave Russia, I think that was very difficult for my very difficult for my uh, for my grandfather, but. Uh, no, I can't say that there is any particular book that I don't like as such, but, but uh, yes. You've already told us about it a little bit, but to elaborate a bit, what is it like to be a descendant of Leo Tolstoy? Well, first of all, it's actually difficult to say how it's not to be a descendant of Leo Tolstoy, because I've always been, I can't really compare, I mean, I can't say how it's not to be. So, so that's a bit, it's a bit of a tricky question in that sense. But I mean, uh, there's a lot of a lot of good things, and a lot, and of course, a lot of uh, things that are, are limiting. I mean, uh, for example, even I don't really have any sort of clear desires to. But I, I mean, for example, I wouldn't want to be an author. I mean, it'd be terrible to be an author. You'll always be compared to your great grandfather, and there's always things you can't really do. Or if you do them, they'll say, "Ah, look what uh, Leo Tolstoy's great grandson is doing. This is terrible." Blah blah. So you can't really be so. I mean, there's the the limitation of anonymous you can't be really anonymous which uh, which i think now in in later life doesn't really matter so much but when i was a well a more when i was younger or a teenager i think that was quite quite annoying but now i think there's a lot of, i mean now i think there's a lot of things that a lot of things that i cherish as that I, I i find it more and more interesting to to uh to spend time with my family and to discover new family members because I, more or less everybody fled russia and so they ended up all over the world. We have family members in in, uh, in 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 Latin America, in Germany, in England, in America, in Sweden. So so there's 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 ample opportunity to visit friends and family everywhere. And every second year we have a big family reunion at uh, at Yastepaliana, where all the fa not I mean not all the family because uh, of course not everybody comes, but but uh, I'd say we're probably around 100 and 120 people uh, every second year. And we spend a week there, and and uh, um, and, and uh, I think that's 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 quite a unique time to uh, to have that uh, that possibility. Could you tell us a little bit more about the family reunions? Well, for the last uh, last maybe twelve years, has been every second year. There's been a, a family reunion at uh, at Yasse Paliana. And uh, and of course because the the, the family is, is, is spread over the world because they all found different places that after the revolution or slightly after the revolution or whatever they they left they, they had maybe a friend there or, or or an acquaintance there and so forth so they, were, they had different reasons to go to different places and now the family is in in, um, in Latin America and in, in North America and and every single more or less every single part of Europe and and um, so. Uh, it's difficult to see every, everybody at once, and, and but this this makes it possible. And so we spend a whole week together there, and, and there's a lot of activities, and and you get to, we're all quite closely related. I mean, we're all sort of second or third cousins, and and of course the generations are coming. There are more and more generations, but 
but uh, but it's quite interesting to see how how you have all these torsos who descend from the one man, and and still there, and you can see there is a lot of uh, they look quite similar in a lot of ways, but but one is like this cool guy from from Buenos Aires, and and then you have this like strict lady from Paris, and and uh, so in character they're actually very different, but uh, but also they have they share this. This this uh, this great joy of meeting and drinking vodka and 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 <laughs> and, and and they all feel like it all like feel like family, but it's uh, but it's a very sort of big and, and very varied family. When you go to Jasna Poljana, do you feel something extraordinary there? I I mean I do uh, I do in, 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 in on several different planes, and on the one hand it's it's because it was my my. Uh, my, my father's favorite place, and he had so many great memories from there from when he was a child, and um, and then uh, and then of course that sort of ties me to, the, to in, in a certain sense to that to that place. Uh, but then but then I think in itself it's a magical place, and and I know so many people who have come with me to visit Jesse Paliana, friends from from Sweden, and and other people you just meet randomly there, and and, and everybody. Everybody I've met have always said that uh, that they they find that Jasperiana in itself is is quite a it's quite a magical place. I mean, it's in a sense it's very simple. It's a very simple place, but uh, but there is something special about it. All right. Could you tell us more about the book that you recently published? Yes, uh, well, actually, th this was a project that was, in fact, born from one of those uh, family reunions, and it was at one occasion we, uh, part of Yasa in but in Tula, but it's but it's owned by the museum, is a publishing house which publishes all the materials related to Yasa and so forth, and there is also, they they, are, they also sell uh, a few other books as well, and and one of the books they they uh, they had there was was. Uh, also his children's stories and it wasn't published by them but but some other russian publisher i can't remember the name but unfortunately that uh, that um, was not a very interesting copy at all and very uninspiring and then I, I spoke to a lot of other family members who were there and none of them had ever heard of of uh, of, of, of Tulsa's children's stories in there and they're, you know, they're, they're the great grandsons and so forth and so forth, or relatives of Tulsa. I thought that was a bit of a sad state of affairs. So I decided to perhaps, be, uh, and also I have a daughter who at the time was uh, was 10 now, she's 12. But uh, so I thought it'd be, it'd be also great for her to, to have uh, to have this book in her hand. And, and so I decided that I wanted to try to do it, uh, to publish the book uh, again, but, but, but doing it slightly perhaps more in a more modern way and slightly more interesting. So I thought that one way was to uh, to work together with with uh, a world-renowned contemporary artist, and and so I was looking around at uh, at, at uh, artists who uh, not only were, were were famous and great at the time, but also would, that whose work would reflect children's stories, and and then I came across the Swedish uh, artist called Jakob Nordström, who uh, who does who had done quite these sort of naive things and and uh, but still was very popular and so and 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 uh, we spoke and we, we discussed and we 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 did some some trials and and eventually after after about two years of work we we managed to put this book together and uh, and uh, it's been very well uh, very well received in uh, in sweden and and uh, and also now there's a great uh, interest of, of publishing it in in several other countries which which uh, which is very fortunate All right. um. When did you visit Russia for the first time, and what was it like? Well, the first actually, the first time was 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 the, was in ninety one, and it was uh, my father was was invited there by uh, by Yeltsin. There was a, a big congress. It was called the Congress of Compatriots, and uh, my father was really old at the time. Already, he he uh, he was he was uh, he was eighty nine. And so, uh, and he had hoped his whole life for, for sort of to go back to Russia and, and all that. But he had to to leave when he was already, when he was so young, and so so he uh, so he decided that he was going to go, even though he was really old. He accepted to go to to uh, to Russia, and I came with him. And the day after we arrived, there was the coup, 
and uh, we were at uh, we were at some museum and uh, and they said that now Gorbachev has been kidnapped. Gorbachev has been kidnapped, and so we didn't really know what was going to happen, and nobody knew what was going to happen. And then it was all that's that's all, and then nothing. Really, and it was all very calm. And then I, my father was invited uh, to some to the Kremlin to, because the the patriarch at the time was going to uh, uh, inaugurate one of the churches again. And so we were there at some service. And when we left the service, when we left the church, the whole of the Kremlin was was surrounded by by tanks. And so in theory, we were not allowed to leave. And we were sort of prisoners in the Kremlin, blah blah. And then, uh, I, then my father walked out, started to speak to some of the the soldiers on the tanks, and they said, "Yeah, what's going on?" And they said, "We don't know what's going on." And then, so can we pass? Yes, of course you can pass. And then, sort of, there was never any, never any sort of threatening feeling. It all, it was all very. I mean, a lot of in a, in a lot of ways, it was very disorganized. And I think a lot of the people were not on on the coup maker's side. And then. And then it was, uh, and then it was difficult to know what was going to happen because on, on the on the TV there was all these like pictures of trees and and uh, and the Swedish embassy was telling us we have to go back. It's super dangerous. We have to go back and they charged a plane and we decided we didn't want to go back. We want to be there and see everything that happened. And so we tried to find what was happening. We speaking to journalists and so forth. And we went there. We saw sort of the statue of Zajinsky being pulled down and and. Uh, and uh, all these people sort of with massive flags and it was it was an incredibly exciting time and then i was only i was only 17 but uh, but i and and my father was speaking quite a lot to to, to gorbachev at the time and i mean to to yeltsin at the time and and i met him i met him once and i remember after meeting him there, there were all these journalists from from all these different countries, and and they were asking me, "Wow, what do you what do you think of the situation, and what do you think of that? How is it to meet Yeltsin, and what do you think of the future?" And I was so young, I didn't, I really had no idea. But I remember it was an incredibly exciting time, and my father, from from having really felt very old, and 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 uh, I mean, in fact, he died a year later, but suddenly he was like a young kid again. He was like, it was really this was his dream that. Russia, I mean, the old Russia would come back and you had, and then at the time people were, I mean, it was really, it was very, it was such an incredibly positive atmosphere in, in Russia at the time, really incredibly positive. And, and we did also, um, we decided that we wanted to go in and, and go to Yasipliana and visit my, my great grandfather's grave and my, my father's grandfather's grave. And so we took, uh, they, they had, uh, they, they, uh, we had this car and with the police escort all the way to uh, to uh, to Yasipoliana. and uh, and at one point my father said that yes but we need to to have some flowers for the grave as well and and so uh, so we stopped and then I jumped into the police car in front of me and the police car said yes yes I know we can buy some flowers and he drove with a red light to some old babushka selling flowers and I jumped out of the police car bought some flowers from from the babushka and he was completely shocked because I was kept coming from this police car and then went in the back and then we went to my to my grand great grandfather's grave, and, and and that was the first time I was in, first time I was in Russia, and also the first time I was at uh, Yasipoliana. Very interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, the things have, it was it was incredibly interesting, and things have changed a lot since then, of course.